May the peace of the Lord be with you all. As we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Come, let us now listen to the Word of God. June 20th, 2024. Thursday of the 11th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Book of Sirach. Elijah arose, a prophet like fire, and his word burned like a torch. He brought a famine upon them, and by his zeal he made them few in number. By the word of the Lord he shut up the heavens, and also three times brought down fire. How glorious you were, Elijah, in your wondrous deeds! Whose glory is equal to yours? You raised a corpse from death and from Hades, by the word of the Most High. You sent kings down to destruction, and famous men, from their sick beds. You heard rebuke at Sinai and judgments of vengeance at Horeb. You anointed kings to inflict retribution, and prophets to succeed you. You were taken up by a whirlwind of fire, in a chariot with horses of fire. At the appointed time, it is written, you are destined to calm the wrath of God before it breaks out in fury, to turn the hearts of parents to their children, and to restore the tribes of Jacob. Happy are those who saw you and were adorned with your love. For we also shall surely live. When Elijah was enveloped in the whirlwind, Elisha was filled with his spirit. He performed twice as many signs, and marvels with every utterance of his mouth. Never in his lifetime did he tremble before any ruler, nor could anyone intimidate him at all. Nothing was too hard for him, and when he was dead, his body prophesied. In his life he did wonders, and in death his deeds were marvelous. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous! The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice, let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him, righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous! Fire goes before him, and consumes his adversaries on every side. His lightnings light up the world, the earth sees and trembles. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous! The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the peoples behold his glory. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous! All worshippers of images are put to shame, those who make their boast in worthless idols, all gods bow down before him. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. A reading from the Holy Gospel, according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then in this way, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you, but if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. The Gospel of the Lord Gospel Reflection It's truly amazing how often our Lord exhorts us to forgive. Much of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, from which we have been reading all week, continually calls us to offer mercy and forgiveness to others. And in the passage above from the end of today's Gospel, 
Jesus offers us the consequences of not heeding his exhortations. This passage is a sort of addendum to the Our Father prayer which immediately precedes it. The Our Father prayer gives us seven petitions, one of them being, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's interesting to note that as soon as Jesus taught us this prayer with its seven petitions, he then re-emphasized one of those petitions by stating it again as is seen in the passage quoted above. This added emphasis should assure us of the seriousness of this petition. At first, Jesus simply tells us to pray for forgiveness as we forgive. But he then makes it clear that if we fail to do so, we will not be forgiven ourselves. This should highly motivate us to make every effort possible to completely forgive others from the deepest depths of our hearts. Who do you need to forgive? Forgiveness can be a confusing endeavor at times. The act of forgiveness gets confusing when our feelings do not reflect the choice we make in our will. It is a common experience that when we make the interior choice to forgive another, we still feel anger toward them. But these disordered feelings should not deter us nor should we allow them to cause doubt in what we need to do. Forgiveness is first an act of the will. It's a prayerful choice to say to another that you do not hold their sin against them. Forgiveness does not pretend that no sin was committed. On the contrary, if there were no sin committed, then there would be no need for forgiveness. So the very act of forgiving is also an acknowledgement of the sin that needs to be forgiven. When you make the choice to forgive another, and if your feelings do not immediately follow after, keep forgiving them in your heart. Pray for them. Try to change the way you think about them. Do not dwell upon the hurt that they have inflicted. Think, instead, about their dignity as a person, the love God has for them and the love you must continue to foster for them. Forgive, forgive and forgive again. Never stop and never tire of this act of mercy. If you do this, you may even discover that your feelings and passions eventually align with the choice you have made. Reflect, today, upon any lingering feelings of anger you experience. Address those feelings by the free and total choice to forgive the person with whom you are angry. Do so now, later today, tomorrow and on and on. Go on the offensive against anger and bitterness by overwhelming it with your personal act of forgiveness and you will find that God will begin to free you of the heavy burden that a lack of forgiveness imposes. Let us pray. My forgiving Lord, you offer the perfection of forgiveness to me and call me to do the same toward others. I pray for your forgiveness in my life. I am sorry for my sin and beg for your mercy. In exchange for this holy gift, I pledge to you today to forgive everyone who has sinned against me. I especially forgive those with whom I remain angry. Free me from this anger, dear Lord so that I may reap the full benefits of your mercy in my life. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and share it with your friends and family, so that they may also be blessed as you are. May God bless you.